Hello. So, uh, I realized that I said that I was going to be uploading this video um, in a week from my last video, and it's been almost a year now, so uh, obviously that's not true. But um, here is the uh, ADF uh, GBX cipher uh, that I had said that I was planning on going over. Um, so this is how it's done. So, uh, essentially what the ADF GVX cipher is, is it's kind of a series of two separate ciphers. Um, so the first one, basically what we're going to be doing is just a simple um, substitution cipher. Uh, now this one, uh, what we do here is we write uh, ADF GVX uh, in the row and then ADF GVX uh, in the column here. And then what we would do is go through and fill in this uh, interior matrix here just with random characters it doesn't uh, it has to have all of the characters a through Z maybe but they do have to be in random order and this would have to be uh, kept in like a cipher book or something that the um, the person deciphering it would need this matrix uh, next what we do is we take our plain text message we break it into individual characters right and then what we've got to do is we find the character in the matrix here, and then we take the row and the column uh, of the two and then write it down. And this is our first uh, step of replacement here. Now, as you probably could see just from this uh, and the basic videos, this is still uh, susceptible to uh, n like a normal, um, cracking methods uh, that you would use on any sort of monoalphabetic cipher uh, because you can treat these as characters and this table would follow very very quickly especially with these two things here and repeat characters and cribs it would make it very very easy to repeat but the next step uh, I'll cut that in uh, right now so now we're on to the last step here uh, we've already done our uh, normal substitution cipher here uh, and now we've got this uh, half encrypted text. So the next thing that a, uh, ADF GVX uses is it also uses, in addition to this matrix here, it also has a password too, or a, a code. Uh, and this would also be shared. So here I'm using Mark. Um, and I'm just using that because it was uh, in the book that I was reading. Um, so basically what you do is you take these coordinates here and you write them down in each column. So GD, GX, GD, GX, and so on and so on. And then what you do is you take your code word uh, after you've completed this and filled in all the columns, and then you rearrange the columns in alphabetical order, so AKMR, and you keep the columns uh, shifted like this, right? So basically I've taken all of this A column and shifted it over. I've taken this K column and I've shifted it uh, here. I've taken the R column and I've shifted it here, right? So you've scrambled up the order of the coordinates. And then what you do in order to get your final ciphertext out of this whole thing is you go uh, DXF, XFG, DXF, XFG, uh, XFVG, X, uh, XFVGF, uh, XFVGF, and so on. You just read it down in column uh, order. And then you end up with this cool looking code that only contains the letters uh, ADF GVX, which uh, would look very odd because this would then be turned into Morse code when it was used uh, in World War II. This would have been turned into Morse code and then uh, sent over the radio. Um, I'm not sure if this was used in World War II. It might have been a World War I thing. I'm not too sure. But I do know that it did confuse the hell out of people how they managed to encode all of this meaning with just uh, those six letters. Uh, if you wanted to go backwards through this, you would basically just follow exactly the same steps. So you would take your, your code here, uh, and then you would, uh, because you know the code, right, you would write it out like this, and then rearrange it into alphabetical order. You can do that by yourself. And then what you would do is take uh, these ones in and then fill them in and then this one and then fill them in and then this one and then fill them in and it would be uh, easy peasy 
Um, now, the one thing that I didn't do here that you would have to do in order for this to make sense is you would normally just add a character at the end here because this wasn't uh, easily divisible here, so we had these two empty spots. Now, these last characters, you could fill it with, uh, you know, a, a punctuation mark or something. I didn't have it in my matrix. That's why I didn't bother doing it, just because I didn't want to confuse anyone. But essentially what you would normally do is just add an extra coordinate here, and then when they're decoding it, uh, this would show up relatively easily. You'd be able to tell. Uh, anyways, um, that is the ADF GVX Cypher. If you've got any more questions, you can leave me a comment or send me a message, and I'll help you out and answer them. All right, have a good day.